Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today uh, in this informative webinar about PPCR with our dear site in Japan, director by our dear friend and colleague Keiko Ueda, who is also, besides being the site director of Japan, she's been a senior TA for many years and has been collaborating um, with PPCR and, uh, and also um, is also involved in many other projects with us. So Keiko, welcome. Thank you for your time. Thank you for having us. Thank you also for, to, I'm, I'm seeing that um, Mayumi is here. I'm really honored to say that I've been working with Mayumi for five years already in the, T, in, in the TA group. She's a senior TA in our program too. Um, she's, she has come and visited us in, in Boston for the Advanced Statistics Workshop and Manuscript Writing Workshops. Um, it's really nice. Thank you, Mayumi, for being here. And congratulations again on your PhD. Uh, achievement and uh, professor also sending his regards to you and Keiko today. Thank you. So Keiko, you Thank may you. begin. Great. Keiko, you may begin, um, please. And then uh, we will follow with the PPCR alumni and then I will talk about um, PPCR or mission, how do we work, where are the programs activities and our learning outcomes and what, did, what are the things that you can achieve after PPCR? Thank you. You're muted, Keiko. You are muted. Uh, we cannot hear you right now. Let me try to unmute. Um, you are muted again. I'm sorry. Oh, it's no. okay. Now we thank can hear you. Well. Great. Thank okay. you. Thank, thank you so much. much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alma, for your beautiful introduction. So maybe um, I think I have a lot of alumni, and maybe the pro. Um, Maybe next to your student, I think. I hope maybe in a few minutes, maybe we will have more. So but, um, I will begin now. And if possible, I can share. Uh, can I share my screen? Alma? Yes, all is set up for you. Please try. Thank you. OK. Oh, good. Well. Well, can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay. Um, okay, can you see? Yes, we can. Okay, great, great. So hello everyone and thank you for coming. I am Keiko Veda, director of Tokyo Site. And this is a special session with Japanese alumni and the Japanese student and the prospective student for 2021 BB0. And, very, and this is a very interactive session, so you can talk anytime and you can type your comment in the chat and I can find you a comment. And I also thank Alma and the Professor Felipe to give me this opportunity, this wonderful opportunity. And uh, yeah, maybe Alma can find some name, some familiar name from the chat because I invited many, many students and many, many alumni. So um, PPCR is principles and the practice of clinical research. Uh, we call it the PPCR. And this, I think this is one of the most wonderful program for clinical researcher. And Tokyo side is one of the international side of the PCR. And uh, I believe Professor Philippe or Alma can introduce the program itself. So me and Keiko Weda will talk a little bit about the Tokyo site, okay? So, um, and this is my resume, I'm Keiko Weda. I'm originally from uh, Hokkaido actually. And uh, now I'm a professor of clinical research center presently in Hiroshima University. And I have the special appointment with Tokyo University as a clinical research uh, advisor or regulatory affair, uh, regulatory affair person. And uh, my career is based on the PMDA, which is the Japanese regulation and the Ministry of Health Labor Welfare Office experience actually. I am a um, pediatrician by training, but now I am doing the clinical support, clinical research support job mainly, okay? 
And uh, just let me explain a little bit about the Tokyo site history. So actually, uh, Tokyo site has started in 2030, first in Osaka. Um, actually, I took this course in 2011 when the huge earthquakes and the tsunami hit Japan. I clearly remember it's an unusual situation, actually. Uh, it's, it's kind of very much similar to recent situation of COVID. Uh, I actually almost gave up to continuing the learning that clearly remember many colleagues and many, many uh, friends encouraged me to continue this course. Then I could finally complete this course and uh, yeah, luckily got the student award and I became TA and started the site. And uh, 2050, I believe, I moved to Tokyo and started the Tokyo site, but Osaka site and the Tokyo site is kind of the one, the one kind of we say the Japan site. So um, site is developed a lot and from 2060, uh, we do, um, let me say, um, Japan side, uh, the reason why I started this side is mainly the time differences. As you know, we live uh, far away from Boston and then we have the huge uh, time differences. So the live lecture participation is not easy for us, but Professor Philippe kindly organized the Friday lecture for us. This is a um, different time the lecture. So Japanese student or Asian student can join that the live lecture for the interaction, for direct interaction. So uh, from 2060, so not only Japanese student, but the student who are living in the similar place with a similar time zone could join our site, like China site. And also I remember maybe Korea and uh, I, yeah, Australia, Australia and also Kyukyu student from last year, I believe. So uh, we kindly united and, uh, you know, to make it a big team. And then from 2020, um, uh, with the PPC coordinated support, the Tokyo side developed into the Japan side. So we include, we can include the many students from not only Tokyo, but also other side by web interaction or web uh, meeting. Okay, this is a very um, short history of Japan site. And also I would say that we had the 51 alumni so far. Um, here's the graph of number of students. The, it, it, it looks like a, not so many, but we had a very strong team, very high level Japanese student, uh, uh, how to say, um, very serious and very dedicated to their work and their yeah, very high performance, I believe. So I know the time management and the language is very challenging, but we can, um, yeah, uh, continuously recruit the student with uh, everyone's uh, great help. So uh, you can see the recent uh, number of students is not so high because of COVID situation, but I hope this year we can invite a lot of, lot of students. So the background, background is um, you may be interested in what kind of student are joining this course. Uh, do I need some knowledge or do I need some experience or something like that? But uh, I would say um, not so many students were experienced um, before taking this course, like me. I was not so, um, I can say, not familiar with clinical trial before taking this course. Um, as you can see this graph, uh, we had a large number of medical doctors. Uh, most of them are working in the clinical field. And also we had a certain number of medical doctors who are working in the clinical research field. I can say the uh, clinical research support center like me, uh, we call it ARO, Academic Research Organization. So those doctors are working as a data manager or a monitor or like a regulatory affair consultant like me or clinical protocol developer, statistician, something like that. And also we had many um, paramedicals like um, pharmacist, uh, coordinator, dentist also. And we have uh, pharmaceutical industry people also um, 
uh, some people are from PMDA, the Japanese regulation. So the background is very diverse and the experience and knowledge is diverse for too. So you don't feel anything, any anxious or you don't feel any, um, yeah, concerns about your experience or your knowledge before taking this course. And the motivation is like this. So they, some people were seeking their skill up and also they are interested in seeking their degree and research project. Also, as I said, my background is uh, Japanese regulation. So some people are very interested in working in this field. So they uh, tended to contact me directly. And uh, yeah, we can share very um, interesting knowledge and the interesting time or, or time. So it's, it's, it's very, very wonderful experiences. And yeah, alumni. So we say, I said uh, we had 51 alumni. Actually, it's only, it's not only 51, I would say, because we had a lot of, lots of family kind of like um, supporter, not Japanese, but uh, they are living in another country. But for example, um, senior TA Frederico, he can speak Japanese very much and he sometimes joined the Japanese lecture. And also, um, yeah, TA1 Salvador, he is living in Italy and he always uh, participate in the optional lecture and try to help me. Like the supporter, a lot of, lot of supporter, but in terms of Japanese alumni, we had 51 and uh, yes, um, they, most of them are living in Japan now. And they, um, yeah, I proudly say I had one student, I was a student uh, from 2020, actually last year, Dr. J, I believe, and he is here and he can comment some, Maybe later, I can, I guess, I think, yeah, Dr. J, and he had a very um, good performance, and he got a student award. I'm very proud of him, and also as uh, two people became TA, like Mayumi. She is a longtime friend of me, and she has been working so much for, uh, for the PPC family, and she's now in the. Uh, she last year she did um, senior TA line. And she did a lot of, lot of teaching assistant work. And one more is Zui, he is in now Stanford. He was a brilliant, brilliant student and he became a TA and working as a teaching assistant. So now, and they were working in abroad. Also MPH or PhD, um, they got MPH in US, like Herbert Hajime got his PhD in Harvard, and he became a consultant in McKinsey now. And also, yeah, Junior san he's here today, I believe. And uh, he also got, went to US, right? And some of them went to England, and uh, not only MPH or PhD, for clinical work, some of our colleagues go to, went to um, abroad. And interestingly, some of our colleagues changed their career from industry to regulation or a clinical world to industry. So it was very interesting because we have a lot of student, a lot of uh, background, lots of occupation, and they communicate each other and they stimulated each other and they got some um, very good inspiration from uh, Japanese colleagues. Okay, uh, two more slides, I think. So we, Japanese side, had a lot of, lot of event and the collaboration. Some colleagues uh, got together and uh, did the research collaboration, which is great. And the counseling service, actually, I am kind of um, pharmaceutical affair consultant, then the same colleagues uh, asked me to do um, some uh, research together and uh, to give some advice for them. And there was a collaborate, uh, sorry, the recommendation letter for another uh, career or something like that. Then I will show them beautiful uh, picture. I hope Philippe remember this picture. It's uh, maybe from 2012, no, no, sorry, 2015. Uh, the uh, Professor Philippe came uh, visit us. This is the Narita Airport. 
And uh, one professor from Sao Paulo, Claudia, visited me and we go shopping in Ginza. Uh, this is a certificate party in maybe 2017, I think. And this one is also from guest from Brazil. Uh, Nelsi, world famous future surgeon, and we had a party. Actually, we never missed the time, I missed the opportunity to have a party. So maybe you can enjoy a lot. And the last one is a serious one. So um, PPCR program is very demanding. So one topic for uh, one week, and you can use many materials like reading, video and forum discussion, assignment, group project, a lot, lots of one. So I think some of them feel overwhelmed or feel anxious about language communication and um, yeah, some assignment or something like that, but you don't feel any, uh, any anxious because you can contact me anytime. So you can, you can talk with me at any time talk with your colleagues anytime. So um, maybe we can enjoy this program. So uh, the, as I said before, Friday lecture is the main part. Uh, this is a live interaction for aging student and you can maybe, uh, yeah, uh, even though you feel anxious or you feel very nervous at the first time, but I, so a lot of the students who are very shy, but they became very active after two or three lectures. So don't feel so anxious now, okay? So I will give you a Japanese lecture support uh, after the uh, regular English lecture. Um, actually last year, we had a lot of Japanese session with Japanese students, not only living in Japanese, no, sorry, not only Japanese, students who live in Japan, but uh, the students who live in Boston, actually we had uh, four very beautiful girls from Boston students and we had a very wonderful uh, Japanese lecture in Saturday night every week. So it was very interesting experience for me. Thank you so much. And also, if you need, maybe I can um, ask my friend to uh, teach your English skill. So don't 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 worry so much, okay? So let's run together. It's it's, it's very interesting opportunity for you. Sorry about my presentation is very quick, but um, yeah, I'm so 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 happy to see you, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you, Emma. <laughs> Thank you so much, Keiko, and everyone for being here again and for your presentation. Mayumi, would like would like to, to say some words? I believe so. Mayumi, thank you. No, I, I don't know. Mayumi, thank you. Thank you for great. <laughs> thank you for great introduction. Hi. Yeah, Mayumi has been uh, working as a TA for more than five years, right? Five years, yes. yes. That's very nice. <laughs> very nice. Thank you. I'm working uh, as a team with uh, Aroma in the same group in five <laughs> years. So uh, Aroma was a very helpful for us, uh, not only students, but also TS. So thank you so much. And, and Keiko is very, very good uh, teaching assistant. So she, uh, Keiko got an award for a mm. great TA. Oh, oh thank, thank you. Thank you so yes. much. The last year. Yeah, thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, actually, I think Mayumi san can feel could feel very um, worried about the program at first, right? When you're a student, but yes. after that you became very confident. So maybe this is very encouragement. Uh, this is very, it's a very good encouragement for the prospective student. Mm -hmm. So can I speak in Japanese a little? Okay. Sure, sure, you, you, you can do it. <laughs> May I? Yes, of course. <laughs> so, <laughs> アロマ以外は日本人なので、ちょっと日本語で私も全然あの5年間 
、えー、とディスカッションがオンラインの,あの投稿なのであのそういう意味ではあの書いたり読んだりっていうのは多分日本人すごく得意なので、まあ、そういうところではなんとかついていってっていうところでなんかできてたような気はします。の今あの新しいあの生徒さんは何人いらっしゃってるんですか今えっ、ー、と、ワン、ツー、佐藤先生、もしかしたら、今野くんと笹田先生、それから、えっと、もしかしたら、えっと、4人、四人、五人。谷レニさんもでしたね。谷レニさん。じゃあ、もうあの、はい、まだ申し込んでいただいてないけど、何人かいらっしゃる、まだいらっしゃるって感じですね。はい。はい、じゃあ、<笑>じゃあすいません。じゃあ、あの、続けてください。ありがとうございます。あ、矢野さんもお久しぶりです。聞いてるかな。あ、あお久しぶりでーす。はじめさん。You can talk. You can talk. 顔顔顔出せます。あ、久しぶりです。It's been a while. Happy to meet you again. You meet you again. Do you remember? Ah, Aroma, do you remember? はじめ I do, and he also was a side direct side monitor last year, right? Remember really well. Oh, yeah, yeah, he, he helped me a lot.、Oh. Yes,、Hi. thank Hi, you. Hi, Alma. <laughs> okay, so why are you work in San Francisco? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's a virtual. Yeah, virtual. <laughs> I cannot kind of degree kind of my background, real <laughs> situation in, the, in my home. Yeah. Hajime, how was your student life as a PPC student? Okay, got it. It's my turn. All right. So I'd like to kind of enforce kind of two points. The first one is about the environmental、uh, environment in, during the PPCL. And I, I'm kind of PPCL 2016 graduate, I think. At that time, I was a, a Japanese intern at the US Naval Hospital in Okinawa. And I was actually really, really struggling with communicating with, in English. Yeah, in the yeah, clinical practice there. And also, I was kind of looking for the opportunity to learn the, I guess, clinical research and also systemically, not that kind of, that,、mm -hmm. that kind of, that crunch of some knowledge. So, and so that's why it was a great opportunity for me to develop my English skill and at the same time, the, the clinical knowledge,、uh, clinical research knowledge as well.、So. That's great. And the second point is the, the connection. So I think the second point is really important, not only for the short term, but also the mid and long term. As Mayumi san kindly talked to me, so actually, the, the, my, our relationship is the building not on in the kind of、uh, my actual student life back in 2016, but after graduating the PPCL. I did a lot of opportunity to connecting with the, the clinical research experts like、uh, uh, Ayumi san in the various、uh, situations, not only for the PPCR, but also outside of the PPCR circle. So, yeah, for the, the,、uh, the next student or possible student, I'd like to say strongly kind of recommend this opportunity to take. It's not easy. To be honest, there's a lot of challenges, but this is the, the only way to kind of yeah, the, develop your kind of skills and also yeah, grab the, the variable opportunities for your future, I think. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, Hime. Thank you for your sharing experience on Mayumi and Keiko. So, if you want, I can go over really quickly about PPCR, how do we work, and what are the learning outcomes, and what,、uh, what do we do, and our policy, right, the university policy. And I hope that everyone can,、uh, for all the, the students who are here who are thinking about applying or no.、Um, um, first of all, I want to begin that PPCR was designed since the beginning to be, we have the, this big and important option that is that you can take it from anywhere you are. Okay, I'm saying this, I mean that、um, all the activities are designed to be online and to actually enhance your learning, even though that you are not seeing the professor next to you. And our, and our program is true, it's from Harvard. We have great faculty, but we also have a great group of,、uh, of, of my colleagues at ICPE 
and also the TAs. For me, the TAs are the are the cornerstone of EPCR. They are like a big support, and you and once you enter the program, you'll be assigned to a group of between 25 to 30 people for all around the world, and then you will have the TAs who will give you support. Um, and the TAs will follow you, they will give you feedback on, constantly for all these nine months. So PPCR begins every year on March, and we finish on November. And then um, um, we have five models in on how we divided the, the, the program. Um, but well, let me introduce uh, really quickly Professor Felipe Fregni, our program director, the creator of this amazing program. He began with this idea once he came to Boston and say, I have this great quality of, of education here. How can I take this out of, of, of Boston and down? That's how he began with, with a, a pilot program in USP. He is a alma mater in, in, in Brazil, where, where he studied. And, uh, and then he started broadcasting the lectures and doing um, first, uh, at the beginning, it was a small program, but then he knew that he needed to make something really meaningful. He developed all these nine programs. And every year, all this content, material, faculty, everything is reviewed again, so we can offer the most novel options in, uh, in, in, in learning and education, of course, because we also, like, we know that being online can be a challenge, but as I said before, all the activities and content is dedicated uh, and, and align to your learning, and you will see why. So this is Professor Fregni, uh, Operant and Director, as I mentioned before. And then um, I want to say, uh, Keiko explained it really well, and actually you're, uh, I'm really glad to say that Japan students have always been excellent in the program. They always conquer with the best grades, that the participation is really acknowledged by everyone from, from the professor, the, the, the faculty, and the staff. We know, we know you guys, we know how, how you work, and how the discipline and dedicated you are. So really honored to have you and uh, for the BPCR alumni who are connected today. Thank you just 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 because of that for joining us and making uh, and, and put your your um, your background and your energy into our program because that that helped you a lot. And I say this because you will learn from everyone from the world. We have right now more than 50 sites, international sites. Japan is one of them, but um, you will be connected to people from Brazil, from Argentina, from Peru, who was what the woman had yesterday, from Colombia, Mexico, of course, United States. Then we got Europe, we got um, sites in Basel, Germany, uh, so Basel, Switzerland, and then in Germany, we got Munich, Dresden. In Italy, we got the social group that um, uh, Keiko mentioned about Salvatore Milena, who's a TA1 and also a monitor of, of the social group in Italy for many years. And he took the program uh, back in 2015, if I'm not mistaken, a great ambassador for program with Dr. Fabio Saina. And then we got the great, these big, great sites also in Qatar that is really special for us. We got great clinicians and researchers there too. And you are going to work and learn from each of them every, every time. You're going to collaborate. You're, you're going to be meeting your colleagues in office hours. You, uh, and I'm really happy to say that in PPCR, we, are just not, we just don't care about just your learning, about clinical research. We also care for you to keep growing. And um, for example, just to give an example really quickly, this year, Professor Freyney wrote 88 uh, recommendation letters for the MPH, Master of Science, or the residency programs in the United States. Because we know that you go all the extra mile in PPCR, and he's happy to help you out to conquer your future goals. And, and we're dedicated to that. So we, we, there's a big stuff behind behind our program, and uh, and we really care for quality and for you to 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 learn and to keep growing in in, in any field that you got. If you want to just follow the, the, the clinical part, if you want to be a scientist and clinician at the same time, if you want to dedicate completely to to academia or clinical research, each of them, uh, we we will be here to help you out. So and the target audience is really. Um, Interesting because Keiko put a, I, I was in, I was in her statistic from Japan, and that applied to our program too. Seventy percent of our students are medical doctors, and then we got around uh, like ten percent are medical students. We even accept medical students uh, if we see if we see in the letter of recommendation or in the letter of intent that they have passion for clinical research and that they want to learn. And then we also have pharmacies. We got nurses. We got psychologists. We got biologists. We got the statisticians who just want to grab all this knowledge around clinical research. And we also got people from the pharmaceutical companies. For example, right now we're training uh, Merz Pharma from Spain. We, we, we have trained also Pfizer, Pfizer Novartis, Europharma from Brazil, and other, 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 other institutions. Um, 
and everyone comes here with one goal, how to learn clinical research and try to apply it to their own uh, activities, as I said, uh, and everyone can join and you will learn from each other no matter your background. Some people is just beginning and we also got people from the PhD level, uh, maybe 20% of the people to the PhD level and the rest are um, me medical doctors who are maybe in the residency or fellowship trainings. And then uh, some of them also, 25% uh, are doing the masters and things like that. So all each of these people, even though the background level of knowledge and in clinical research, they all of all of them will learn because they're a, a, like a new colleague from you in the forum discussion that I was playing later and talk about um, how those blinding work in surgery, right? Or how those blind, or, or what about special populations in pediatrics? How do we do clinical research in pediatrics that differs a lot compared to internal medicine because they're a special population? Or what about other other issues in, in, in ethics that maybe doesn't apply to another field? So you'll keep learning about how they do or a study design, like what the Selen's design that is in, uh, sometimes used in, in, in pediatrics and in other fields is not, and things like that. So. Each of you will be collaborating every week. So we give you like a topic every week. You have one week to, to develop the activities. It's not that you have to do it today, everything. You have one week to do it. You can do it on your own piece. Like if you are free on Saturday or maybe Sunday or, main, or maybe Monday night, then you can work and, and do it and do your work at, at any time or when you are available. Some people and myself, I used to do it on the train like read my readings on the train or when I was waiting for the train or maybe on my breaks in the hospital or things like that. Um, and you, because that's also the beauty of online and in BPCR, we, every year we test again, the best platforms to be, to work online. Uh, for example, we use Google Classroom for the material. We use River for forum discussion. All of us are here familiar with it. I know that the beginning could be a little overwhelming. Like the first week you are, oh my God, I have to do all this, but then you get used to it. And you always want to go back to the forum and read what your colleagues respond to you. Or, or what their colleagues are talking about right now, or, or someone else is asking a new question and maybe you can help out and things like that. Um, and talking about the forum, so in the forum, we have two main activities every week, the forum, that is where you post every week, and then the assignment. So in the forum, we put around five to seven subtopics and you choose whatever you want to post. It's not that you are not required to post in each of them. We just ask you to make five posts. A post is like a creation of a material, like I would say, uh, please, the, the, may you read this article, making an example. And then uh, what is your impression of the article? How will you do this, this, this study design? What could be the limitations in this case? So we make questions to you to analyze. So we direct the discussion to you, telling you what, what is important for us, for you to learn and to understand from that paper. So we guide your thinking and we help you out to develop that critical skills because we want you to be able to read a, read a paper right now that has been published as you know COVID had, had uh, created like a big amount of studies right now and uh, and we are able and you have seen how how some studies have been retracted already when they were the design and the ethics and the limitations were not proper and that invalidated the results right so you will be able to learn that. You will be able to see bias. You will be able to say, I believe this, this is not valid because of this, or I, or I believe this limitation could be improved or could be managed because of that and things like that. Um, so that's the forum, five posts per week. And then we got an assignment that are, is around one to four questions per week. It's really easy. Um, as I said, you, you have the time to do it in one week and then you get the feedback of your TA every week. You will get, okay, your score was good or outstanding, excellent. Or, you know, or maybe you need to work in this. And they explain to you, you, you missed this important part. Please remember that we, so we always give you like a nice a personal feedback to your work. And that's really important because we want you to learn. We are committing to your learning. And then about the context, so we, we got five models. We begin uh, with the basics of, of clinical research, uh, how to design a, 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 a study question, how to define your population, what will be the best method of blinding in your research according to the phase, according to the outcome, according to the variable that you're measuring, right? It's not the same if you're measuring how a device work compared to how to, uh, if you're measuring pain in the, in, 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 in the patient, right? Because pain is subjective. And then how to do the blinding if you're going to do a peel or if you're going to do an injection, and then if you have to use placebo, how to make that the patient believe that it could be in either way and, he, and that the patient doesn't um, guess in what treatment arm they are assigned. Because remember, if they know where they are, 
probably that uh, knowing that they're in placebo group, they, they might think, oh, this is not working at all, right? And or maybe they want to quit the, the trial or, or the outcomes will be negative because their impression is that placebo, of course, doesn't work and won't do any effects. So we have to do a proper blinding and then randomization process and things like that. So we go with the basics. And then for the model two and model three statistics, I know that many doctors are, doesn't like statistics, um, but we go from the basics. What type of variable is this? What could be the best statistical test applied to this variable? And then and you have many options, right? Is it continuous, categorical? Maybe it could be a t-test or ANOVA for continuous and, 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 uh, and t-test just one, uh, two groups, ANOVA more than two groups. And you will learn all the rules on, on knowing what is the best test to use and then how to interpret this test. Uh, we do a, a stats a statistic exercise. We use Stata and that is included in the program fee. So the fee, I believe for size is right now 3000 uh, and that includes the nine program months, right? The Stata IC version version 16, that is the latest uh, version of Stata. And uh, even though that we do assignment, it's not like we're going to give you the data set and you have to do it all on your own. We give you the data set and then we give you the commands on how to run it. And then we make you think a little bit like, okay, you have this type of variable, what could be the best test? So you have to choose of all the commands that we give you, what is the best option for you? And again, I know that is a little challenging at the beginning because other people is used to S SPSS or P info or, or R, um, but, but we give tutorials. You have the office hours too, that I missed to mention that. Every Wednesday and Saturday, you got your TAs waiting for you in a Zoom chat um, uh, a meeting where you open your camera if you want to, or just talk or just type a question, and they will be there to help you with any question or doubt that you have about the program, the assignment, the material, an article, and sometimes we can even help you in your own pro, uh, uh, projects that you got. Maybe you're working right now in institution with something and you're stuck on how to do the sample size calculation, so you just send us an email and, and we will help you out. And that's the beauty of PPCR. We call it the PPCR family. We got a big group of TAs. Last year, we got 190. This year, uh, probably will be a little more. We are right now training more, almost 400 TAs. The TA workshop just began last uh, on Monday. And today in, in the afternoon, we have the TA workshop meeting, the first one that we got for the training with them. Um, because once you graduate, you can also become TA as, as, as Mayumi and, and Keiko, that besides being site director, is also a TA. And myself too, even though that I'm, I'm the, education, the associate director of education in the program, I also like to be always next to the students to, to see them grow. And that's also really nice. Of course, I will help you to, the, to your CV, uh, but the best uh, reward that you can get is to help other uh, and you help them grow also in their learning. If you want to be part of that as an option, it's, that's not required. Um, and then, so the final model for model four and model five, um, there are more uh, specifics uh, of on, on study designs. For example, we do regression analysis. We, we also go over how to do the recruitment and errors of the patients. We also go of non inferiority designs that are also really important to do how to say that a drug is not inferior to another one, meaning that this one can work almost the same as the standard, and maybe this new one is cheaper or easy to administrate. So it is worth it to uh, study it and say, yes, this can also work for an asthma crisis, right? Um, so that's the non inferiority designs. And then model four, five, sorry, we also go over a little more deeply on observational studies. And then we come, and then we also analyze how to manage confounders in observational studies because this is the, the biggest uh, drawback of them, right? So if, but if you are able to detect them and to have a good strategy and to do a proper way um, of selecting the people that will come to your, to, to your analysis, then this observational studies can be and have as a strong evidence as a randomized clinical trial if they are really well designed. And then in the last lecture is comparing both designs, randomized clinical trials, right? Where we want to test an intervention and, and, uh, and, and uh, you manipulate the device, the drug or, or, or anything else that you want to do like a diet. Or we do as all compared to the observational studies where you are just collecting information and you analyze it, you are not manipulating, manipulating the, the, the intervention in this case, you are just watching and, uh, and go, you can go retrospective or prospective, but you're just collecting data, you don't manipulate it. And then that's a nine month program. Uh, we have 24 lectures that I require. For Japan students, we have an option that instead of meeting on Thursday, you have your meeting on Fridays. 
So on Friday mornings, a senior TA will come and do the lecture for you. It's a really practical lecture. They, they it's, it's the same topic as on Thursday, but it's more uh, oriented to practical examples. So we, we put articles, we gave you data sets to run, and, uh, and uh, it's, it's, it's something really nice to grab the knowledge of the whole week. Uh, but let me tell you that even though that the lecture on Thursday uh, is, sorry, that, that the lecture, we have a lecture on Thursday, everything is recorded and safe for you to access. So we have a platform where every week we put the lecture of the week, on Thursday, the lecture of Friday, the slides of the of Fridays, the, the slides of Thursday, the presentation and PowerPoints, I mean, and the recording. So you're always able to catch on that material. And I was saying yesterday, for example, one student from 2015 just emailed me, Alma, I lost my material, I don't have my classes and I want to study them again because I'm working on a new trial. So yeah, we can send them to them even though the six years have passed, right? So all this, this material is safe for you to access because you are, you are the student. And you, you have to email us to the coordinator email that is always connected to all the current emails and us. And then during July work, during the July break that's in the middle, there is no lectures, but you have the group project development. So that day on, on the July break, you have five meetings with your groups and the TAs who will help you out in the group project. So what is the group project? The group project is the main activity of PPCR where you apply all your knowledge. Uh, everyone really enjoy it because it's, that's how you learn how to do a protocol of a randomized clinical trial from scratch. You will begin how to define the research question because that's the key, like the first stuff that you have to do. How to define it? I'm really sorry for that. Uh, how to define it? And then, um, and then you you go with the population. Uh, you the study design you have to do. What, what phase of the study? Phase one or two or three? Most of the time, all the studies are phase two actually. The one that they pick, yeah, for for the for the projects in PPCR, and then and then you also have um, you, you develop this, this, the sample size, it's a, it's a typical plan. You have to define really what the recruitment, the blinding, all this. So it's really nice, and I hope that you can enjoy it. And if you have any questions, let us know. Oh, I missed to say the last activity is the five days immersion course that Keiko has come on, on the last past two years. Thank you, Keiko, for coming. It's really, and I believe I have a picture. Let me stop sharing that. Uh, Keiko also on that year, she um, she earned uh, also, where is it? Let me, um, she earned uh, an award from Professor Fregni for being a great site director uh, as, where is, give me one second because I have so many windows. I'm really sorry for it. Here it is, let me access. And I have the picture right here. Um, but yes, Keiko has been on for all the years too. And I want to say thank you. And Professor Freyne is apologizing that she can, he can be here today because um, I don't know if you can see it. Can you see my screen? Yes. <laughs> yes. So this picture is really special for us. Uh, he, she earned this an award from, from Professor Freyne that in 2019, this was in Brazil. Uh, the five days <laughs> is there. So all the students come and we give the awards to our best TAs, the awards to the base size, and uh, also uh, Mohamed Hashim for Qatar Airnet and Keiko and Sunilda Nunez from Dominican Republic. Be, like above all the 55 that we got. Uh, just to say thank you for their commitment and their work. Uh, but it's really amazing, so I hope that you can join. And then if in, the, in the five days you come and you, all of you come, we got, like, in 2019 it was 320 people. All the students came with all the Harvard faculty, 16 Harvard faculty came too, and they come to talk to you and and they will review your group project protocol, the randomized clinical trial that I mentioned before, and they will come to review it, review session by session. So for example, Shannon Stock will review your, your sample size. Professor Armando, Armando they say that we will review your statistical plan with a PhD in statistics that we uh, all of us um, really honor, uh, we're honored to have him. And then Janice Brees will review your study design. And Ingenberg will review uh, your outcomes and things like that. So all your project is reviewed by one Harvard faculty in those five days. You've got to talk to them in like 45 minutes and they will go over that each section of your project until you can publish that project and publish it. So it's really amazing. Besides knowing your colleagues face to face because all the year you are working with 53 countries around the world. You don't know the person live. You just know them in the camera, right? But it's amazing to have them next to them and giving them, you know, just know them and give them a hug. Oh, here you are, I know you. Uh, and it's really, it's really special to actually uh, be with your colleagues working together in, in those projects. So thank you, everyone. 
I really appreciate your time for being here, Mayumi and Keiko. Mayumi, I hope to work again with you in, in, with you in the group of TAs. Uh, it will be our sixth time together. Thank you for that. And Hakim, <laughs> thank you for the work. Keiko, thank you so much for, uh, for all, all, also your commitment and dedication to PPCR. Even your idea for the group project was done by group five, the mask oh, yeah. for COVID prevention, imagine. Like all of us work together and we try to help. And thank you for that. So any questions about the program or, or anything? Anyone, anyone? Oh, I'm sorry that I see them in Japanese. I cannot read it, but I hope that there are no words. Um, there are no words that or questions that I could help with. Um, right now, okay, all the sites are closed, right? All the sites are closed. I forgot to say that. So the, the University Harvard were closed until August 2020. So you will have to connect to the lecture with a link that we will give you. And you don't have to pay the extra fee because web students pay more. Web students pay, if I'm not mistaken, that with the finance team, uh, 4,500. But as a site, you pay 3,000 because there is a discount price for the site students, okay? And even though that is, you, you're not going to go into the sites, you're registered in Japan site, and then you will get the discount for 3,000. And you will send you the link to Zoom and we won't charge you the university uh, waive the payment. That difference of 1,500 is way for you. Okay, so you don't yeah. have to worry about that. So the sites are closed for safety. Even, even if we come to, to uh, August and then Keiko sent an email and look, Alma, uh, Japan is not ready to be open. So we don't open because we follow your policy. We care for your mm -hmm. safety, but we follow your policy of, of COVID. So if you don't open by August, we also understand that you don't have to get together. It will depend on how everything will go. Of course, we're hopeful that uh, this pandemic just go down worldwide uh, that has been so terrible in many aspects, life yeah. and everything else, but yeah. yeah. So thank right. you. Right. Thank you so much. So everyone, everyone, does anyone have a uh, the question or a comment maybe from alumni or any anyone? Is it okay? Junior-san, you, can you talk? A word, a single word. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everyone. It's long time. It's long time. <laughs> yes, uh, it's been a long time. This is June from Ehime in Japan. So first and first, uh, thank you for PP share team, including Professor uh, Keiko and the Dr. Yano. I really appreciate it with your uh, help. I started at the PP share out uh, in 2017. Uh, I at that time, I participated while working at the uh, U.S. Naval Hospital in Japan, uh, like uh, Dr. Piano. Uh, I participated in this uh, training because I, I have a little uh, experience in research and uh, I, I wanted to run the online uh, running. After that, I obtained a Master of Public Health uh, from the Emory University in Georgia. To be honest, the PPCR uh, running is more difficult than the uh, Emory University uh, studying. And the, I'm not currently uh, involved in clinical research, but I just, uh, yeah, now I, I got a, a certificate in public health uh, national board uh, this, this, this month. I, ju I just got the certification, uh, national certification in public health. And now I, while I'm working as a, a doctor in Japan, I'm, I'm involved in uh, public health field. Well, uh, the reason why I, I participated in this program, uh, PPCO, is uh, now it's common to meet uh, via Zoom or any other online uh, tool. But for me personally, I was not familiar with online learning. Uh, since I wanted to run public health online and on campus uh, hybrid course in US. So for me, uh, it's a good uh, opportunity to be familiar with online running. Um, on top of that, uh, as uh, Alma said, uh, I wanted to write down some recommendation to US University. Uh, Professor uh, Keiko uh, kindly wrote uh, a recommendation to U.S. University, and uh, 
So here I can see some potential students. I strongly recommend to join this program, not only studying the, the so statistics, but uh, it's a great opportunity and we can um, connect with a uh, really, really uh, great, um, excellent student, uh, not only Japan, but also in the world. Yes, and thank you so much, Keiko-sensei. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. It's a really long time. Maybe see you there. <laughs> yeah. Hey, thank you so much for, for, for sharing your experience. And I'm really glad the BCR helped you. And we say this every day. We believe our BPCR family, once you graduated, that you are part of it. All of us keep saying that BPCR changed our life. And I can say that it changed mine too, a long time ago. And, uh, and, I, and uh, I can say, for example, when my, my mentor, I was doing my rotation in pediatrics at UM in Miami, Florida. And then my boss said, look, Alma, there is this program for clinical research. We would like to go. Like, you, you, you could apply. There is a scholarship, like, like moving as a lab fellow. And I was on my, like, it's Harvard. And I knew, because we know before coming to the, to the residency, we know that the CVs of the doctors going to be a doctor in, in Harvard is like they're biology, psychologists, way before do, being doctors, right? Their CV is like so amazing. Mm. And I was just a training from Nicaragua, from Nicaragua, Latin America. And uh, I was like, okay, let's, let's, do, let's take the challenge. And then once in Boston, and I said this yesterday, my colleague next to me was Clarice Castro, a doctor from Dominican Republic, but he lived in New York. And he, he has been studying pain in NYU city, in New York City, in, in NYU, the university, right? The NYU hospital for 11 years. He's been training and studying pain for 11 years. And I knew it, nothing about clinical research and he was just amazing. And that was my colleague next to me. Um, but that just put you like uh, on a set of mind, like keep working, keep studying, something that you are, you are in the lecture right now and you didn't understand, ask the question, go to your teaching assistants, don't be shy. Like, and don't be shy to, and don't be shy to be grown because here, all of us can be grown at some, at some point, and, but the program challenges you to keep growing. So don't take it like, oh my God, I don't know. It's Harvard, it's going to be hard. Yes, it's a little hard, but you can do it. Believe me, all of, if you are here, you can do it, okay? And we got people like, other year we got, and Professor Freni always say this case of one, of one doctor from Brazil. She was the chief of the program of neurosurgery in the hospital and she was so busy that she wanted to quit and say, I, I don't have time. Like I've been doing surgery after surgery because we don't have staff I can, and I cannot do it. I will have to quit. But she did it. And actually after that, she, she did the MPH in Harvard too. So with that in mind, just set up a schedule. I always recommend my own students to do it, to try to do the post before Monday. So everything is set up for Monday and maybe the assignment before Saturday. So you can talk to, the, to your teaching assistant with time. You can send an email at any time and we're instructed to answer you back in the first 24 hours. And everybody knows that if not, I will just pulling up ears, calling their attention <laughs> if they don't answer fast to you, if they can. Um, but yes, we try to be there for you. So don't believe, yeah. and, and sometimes if the level is really high for you, we can even send other articles to make it more simple for you to understand the basics and then go to the hardest part of the program. And we even have a book that we use every week, created by Professor 2012, yeah. Every week yeah. we use this book and, and it's actually available in PDF online for free, I believe, according to my resources, so you don't have to pay for it. Um, but this book has the cases of the week. Every, so every week we have a case, a, 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 study, a, a study about our researcher doing X trial. And then we go over the possible options that he can go and we ask you, okay, Mayumi, what could be the best option for this doctor, for Dr. Higgs or Dr. Hart? Uh, in what he's in, his, in, in, in the trial that he's doing, and we introduce introduce you to all those concepts really easy. So this program managed like as I said, the book is so easy to understand. I've been reading a lot of clinical research book my whole life, well since with VCR, and some of them are really condensed and are really hard to read since the, if you are just beginning. But this book, for example, is is something that uh, that is really well designed, going from the basics to the hardest part of the topic. So I totally recommend it and I hope that you can join us. If you have any questions, let me ask my email. I always try to answer as fast as possible. Please count on me anytime, okay? Yeah, thank you, Emma. I was always amazed by your lessons quickly. So thank you so much. No, that's, that's my pleasure because I know that being online is hard and we don't see the people live, so we need support. And I know that because I was a student too. 
So and I hope that you enjoy and uh, have a nice night because I know that it's night already in Japan. And thank <laughs> yes. you everyone. And for the people who are in Boston, I know that many of you are applying for the MPH and the PCE program of clinical effectiveness. And we mm -hmm. hope and we're sure that you will make it. Okay, we're sure that you will make it. Please let us know if you get in as soon as you get that accepting letters. Okay. <laughs> Because we get really happy, we get really happy with those news from you. When you when you send an email, just quickly like, oh, Emma, we got accept, and then we, everybody's you know, with everyone <laughs> in the program. We share it with everyone too. So thank you. Yeah. Have a good nice night. Yeah. It was a yeah. pleasure. Yeah. Thank you come to Japan someday. <laughs> thank you so much. Yes. We want to We want to travel. We want to do it. I don't know. Thank you. Decide, but this year has it's been really big fun for you. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yeah, I, will, I, will, I, will, I will love to. I, I will see how how once the 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 borders open and we can travel yeah that would be one of my places yeah i haven't gone to it to any of the sites in yeah. asia just latin america so far um but yes it's lovely to me yeah. person and, be yeah. there and do the lecture from your side because that's the beauty be there for this for the lecture so okay. next during the lecture yes nice. thank you so much everyone bye